pastor and founder is Elder Darren McKinnon. We like to say thank you for viewing us every week on Facebook and YouTube Live. However, we would like to see your face in the place. On Wednesday night, we'll have prayer and Bible study that starts at 7 p.m. Sunday morning worship starts at 10.15 a.m. We're located at 3815B Martinez Boulevard, Martinez, Georgia. And to know more about us, please visit our website at www.words with an S, wordsoflife20.org. Or you can give us a call at 706 257 3022. Come on down and take a drink right here at the Fountain of Life at Words of Life Minister of the Apostolic Faith. We promise you, you'll never thirst again. May God continue to bless, keep, and prosper you throughout this week in Jesus' name. Now join us for our praise and worship. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God.
God, he's got everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 How many know you don't belong to yourself on this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I 
give myself, I give myself to you. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together
You are to praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, 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 my Savior, Jesus, Jesus, my healer. Thank you, O oh God, for he is truly worthy to be praised. And if you're able to stand, we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. We want to give honor to where honor is due. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And here to remind us that God is worthy to be praised is our very own pastor and founder of Words of Life Minister of the Apostolic Faith. Is our very own pastor, Elder Darian McKinnon. Somebody shout, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Son. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, who knows that he is worthy to be praised. There's none like him. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Ah, oh, he is worthy to be praised. Oh, man. You, you know what? It shouldn't even be a thought in your mind about praising God. Hallelujah. You, you shouldn't even have to conquer yourself up. Hallelujah. It should be automatic. You know just how you think, you, you know, you blink your eyes and you won't even think about it. Praising God should be just like that. Just like you blink in your eyes. Hallelujah. You, you should just tell him, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God, he's worthy to be praised. Mm. Woo. That, that just does something. Oh, my God. He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Let, let us go into the word of God here. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Mm. The scripture for today is 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 15, and 1 Samuel 22, 1 through 2. And while you're finding that, I say, Praise the Lord and oh to my beautiful wife. She look lovely. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I say praise the Lord to all the saints and the visitors and friends that are here on today. I say God bless you. And let me tell you something. He's worthy uh, for you showing up on today. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Samuel 21. That's in the Old Testament. Amen. Towards the back. Hallelujah. First Samuel 21 and 10. Hallelujah. First Samuel 21 and 10. It reads as this. 
Hallelujah. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servant of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? I thought Saul was still the king. Ain't he not this David the king of the land? Did not they not sing one to another of him in dancing, saying, Saul has slain his thousand and David his ten thousand? Now, this is way down in Philistine, way down in another country. It's funny how news travel, ain't it? I mean, these women were singing about, you know, David and, uh, uh, and news then got all the way down there to the enemy about what they were singing about. Now, who was it that took me? Anyway, let me go on. And David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish, the king of God. And he changed his behavior before them. And, and, and fiend himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gates and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of a madman, madman, that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? First Samuel 22. Let's stroll on down a little bit. First Samuel 22 and 1. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Abdullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down hither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was uh, discontent gathered themselves unto him. And he became a, a, a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you on this day. We magnify you. You are awesome, God, and we do appreciate you, Father. Father, hallelujah, may your word, God, oh, go out and may the people receive it. Hallelujah, and then apply it. We all apply it to our lives, God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all all right today? Amen. Man, look at them two beautiful young ladies back there. Jasmine and uh, Egypt. Yeah, look at them sitting up. They, don't they look lovely? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, it's good to have the young folks in the house. Hallelujah. To learn what we're supposed to do. Hallelujah. The title of the uh, message on today is Change Your Behavior. And this is part two. Hallelujah. And it's subtitled Unseen Sin. The Unseen Sin. The Unseen Sin. And this message, as I told you before, Jesus, he wants us to see some things, hear some things, learn some things, so that we may change some things in our lives, so that we may make better choices and change our, you know, that unwanted behavior. Mm. How did David find himself in a position to where he had to change his behavior and act like a mad, crazy man? He left off, uh, we left off last week uh, discussing how, how the history and the background uh, are very important in this message in order to link yourself into it. Uh, so I inform you that... Uh, um, uh, that we was going to be spending a little time uh, in the history and background of why David took a position uh, that he must change his behavior and act like a madman. Listen, 
We, we just don't change our behavior just because. Uh, uh, there's something that influences us to change our behavior. Uh, uh, what is that thing? What is that thing that causes us to act the way we act? That causes us to respond the way we respond. Uh, to cause us to think the way we think. Uh, to answer the way we answer. Uh, to behave like we behave. What is it? Where did we get it from? What did it come from? We began this message on last week with Samuel, uh, 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 the prophet and the judge of Israel. And he had two sons that he had put in charge Hallelujah. And, and those sons, they just didn't do what God asked them to do. Mm -mm. They did all the wrong things in the sight of God. They walked contrary uh, to God's uh, 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 will. Hallelujah. And his way. The ungodly behavior of Samuel's two sons, it caused Israel to reject God as their king. God, God is... You know, he's the king of kings. But they end up rejecting God as, hallelujah, their king. And, and so this caused Israel to want a, a king like the world, like their neighbors. And mm, you know what? They did it because of Samuel's two sons. In other words, they let them two boys run them out of church. And stop serving God. And rather to latch on to the world. They, that's what they did. They allowed them to run them up out of church. And stop serving God. And latch on to it. Because they, want, they wanted what the world had. Uh, man don't, don't let nobody do that to you. So Samuel anointed Saul. To be Israel's first king. In the beginning old Saul. He was doing alright. Encouraging the people. Running before them in war. And winning wars. But, somebody say, but. but. But it came a day when old Saul refused to do the will of God and follow the instructions of God. He decided to do his own thing. Mm -hmm. He decided to be a people pleaser rather than to please Jesus Christ. The word of God said that he was chosen by the people and not by God. So God told Saul that he, had, that he was not going to support him anymore. That he was going to choose himself a, 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 a king for his people, Israel. A man, a king, a man after his own heart. So this is how David became anointed king of Israel when he was a young kid, uh, attending to his father's sheep. Now... We left off with the discussion of how David got fighting mad with that big Philistine guy. I think his name was Goliath because he was talking stuff about David's God. Yeah, that's what it was. So Goliath thought he had this thing all wrapped up because he, David walked up there and, you know, he was a little fella. Hallelujah. Probably about like me. Little fella. He was Rudy Tootie. <laughs> a boy named David stood in front of Goliath. And, 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 and I bet Goliath thought he had it all figured out. He thought that his, this fight was over before it even began. He thought because David was small in stature and his age that he was, uh, uh, that this was a sure enough win for him. Uh, but... David, hallelujah, messed around and got fighting mad mm -hmm. because he talked about David's God. And don't y'all allow nobody to talk about Jesus. Don't allow nobody to put Jesus down. Oh, my God. He got fighting mad because he was talking about Jesus. And he told Goliath, you come at me with a sword and a shield, but I come at you with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's on my side. And you see who laid dead at the end, right? Goliath. Hallelujah. I should tell you something. Whose side shall you be on? Jesus' side. 
Hallelujah. You need to be on Jesus' side. My God. Just like we uh, have heard from previous uh, teaching and preaching here at the church, we can't be playing with the devil. I think it was mainly uh, Mother Selby was talking about that. We can't be playing with the devil because you'll mess around and get hurt. Uh, so you need to get fighting mad and, and, and knock that devil out by putting the word of God in that slingshot and pow, knock him upside the head with it. With the word of God. Now, as we pick up on this week, we continue with the background and history of why David uh, was acting like a crazy madman in, in our anchor scriptures. After David had uh, killed Goliath, uh, he became a mighty warrior fighting against the Philistine. They was rolling up back home in the home camp, David and Saul and the rest of them. So when they entered through the home camp gates, the women were singing a song. And the song said in 1 Samuel, you might want to go there. We're going to spend a little time there. 1 Samuel 18, 6, starting at verse 6. So the women were singing a song. And, and it said, uh, and it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women came out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul. Now they came out to meet King Saul. They came with tambourines, tabrets, and with joy and with instruments of music. And verse 7 says, And the women answered one another, as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousand, but David his ten thousand. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, I'm going to stop to say this right here. This is uh, one of them sidebar notes. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. I, I, I do know this. I, I know this. The same ones, uh, a lot of the time that puff your head up with praise. The same ones uh, would be the same one to take a pen and, and, and deflate you. That's the same ones. And, and they'll try to bring you down. I'm just saying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The same ones will bring you down. Listen, James uh, 3 and 10 says, uh, Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. James said it shouldn't be. Uh, but it's like that when it comes to some people. Uh, have you ever been talking to somebody and, and they're quoting scriptures and giving you uh, God, giving God the praise. And before you leave, before you can walk off, they start saying every cuss word in the book. Amen. Anybody, ever, anybody ever talk to anybody like that? They forgot where they were. They forgot and left there and put the wrong mask on too quick. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, when people lift you up, they can bring you down. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. In other words, when you get down on your knees, uh, uh, Jesus will lift you up in promotion. Jesus will do it. Uh, but you must fall on your knees. And what Jesus is really talking about here in that scripture is for you to fall down on the needs of your heart. That's what he's really talking about. That you must humble yourself. The Bible says in Psalm 75 and 6 and 7, it says, For a promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, neither from the south. Hallelujah. But God is the judge. He putteth one up, uh, he putteth down one, and then he putteth one up. Hallelujah. He setteth one up. He setteth up another. 
take one down, he does it. This is why, listen, this is why you should uh, uh, allow the Lord God to promote you. Even though uh, uh, the ceremony may be done by man, the promotion itself, it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus do it, uh, it can't, uh, can't nobody bring you down. Uh, no matter what they try, uh, you will be able to stand the test of time. Uh, the only person that can bring you down would be yourself. That's the only one, which is the same thing that happened to old brother Saul. Uh, he brung himself down uh, be, uh, from being promoted to being king of Israel because he did not obey and follow the instructions of Jesus. Listen, don't let the devil use you to bring down the man and the woman of God. Uh, to bring down your brothers and your sisters. Uh, uh, know who you're fighting. Uh, uh, you're not fighting the man of God and the woman of God or your brothers and your sisters. Uh, you're fighting Satan, the devil. Know who it is. So let's go back to 1 Samuel 18 and 8. Uh, it goes on to say, and Saul was very wroth, uh, and saying, and the saying displeased him. Hallelujah. And he said, they have ascribed unto David 10,000. And to me, I can, I can just imagine him saying that. I can just imagine the attitude, his body language behind what he was saying. I mean, can't you just... You know, his body language behind what he was saying and whoever he was talking to. They ascribed David 10,000. But to me, <laughs> they have ascribed but a thousand. Mm -hmm. And what can he have more but the kingdom? I, you know, don't sound like to me he did anything trying to get the kingdom or trying to do anything to him. He just went out and fought in a war. He happened to kill more people than he did. But see, it, it had nothing to do with David. It was, you know, the women were singing. David didn't say, I killed uh, 10,000 and you ain't killed nothing but 1,000. It was the women that were singing. And he was mad with David. You know, that's, that's about like, that's about like somebody cheating on somebody. It's interesting that they get mad with the person, the other person that they're cheating with, or whatever, however that goes, and, and not mad with the person that's doing the cheating. I mean, okay, well, I'm just being real. Hallelujah. Listen, they have ascribed unto David 10,000, and to me have ascribed but a thousand. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Verse 9 said, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. Listen. In verse 9, it said that Saul eyed David from that day forward. Now, that means that Saul was looking at David with that old stinky eye. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody give you that old stinky eye. Uh -huh. That's the way he was looking at David. In other words, any time there was communication between Saul and David, uh, uh, there was a backdrop of a negative attitude. A backdrop of negative attitude. It was the sowing of seeds of that unseen sin, that, that envy and strife. It was being sowed at that time. Hallelujah. There was a backdrop. He eyed him. He hadn't said nothing to him yet. He was just giving him that old snake eye. Of course, when he talked to him, I'm sure he had some type of attitude that was there. You know, uh, you see, Saul wanted the accolades of the people. Yeah. 
Uh, this is why this thing bothered him so much. When the women ascribed 10,000 to David uh, and only 1,000 to him, uh, because this is what uh, drives him uh, uh, to do what he do. This is what feeds him. Hallelujah. It is the accolades of the people instead of the word of God. Hallelujah. This is why I always tell you to come to church for Jesus. Uh, let the purpose of your first priority or your first priority uh, for coming to church, uh, to the house, church house, uh, to seek out. Jesus, to learn of him, more knowledge and wisdom of him, to serve him, to fellowship with him. Uh, and lastly, you come uh, to assemble and fellowship with the rest of us so that we may help build each other up. Hallelujah. Listen, when you, when you do whatever it is that you do, do it unto the Lord. And not unto the pastor and the first lady. Because one day we might forget to give you some accolades. Or we may uh, give somebody else some accolades and don't give you no accolades. Uh, we don't mean to do it that on purpose. But it happens. Because we're human. Uh, we can't think of everything. And we can't see everything. It reminds me. Mm hmm of an individual that came to church recently, came back, and he wanted to testify, but didn't get an opportunity to do that. Now, because I, it wasn't because I didn't want him to. It, uh, it, he wasn't purposely overlooked. It just happened. I, I spoke to this individual afterwards, and and. He, after he didn't get a chance to testify. And he was vocally upset. And, and haven't come back to the house of God since. You see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You got to have Jesus first. Jesus has to be on your mind first in your life. His agenda has to be first and not yours. I, I, I know, listen, I know, listen, I know what the Bible says. It says in Revelation uh, 12 and 11, it says, And they overcame him uh, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And get this part now. And they love not their lives unto death. I know the word says that they overcame by the word of their testimony. But we must contend with the last part of that scripture also, which says they love not their lives unto death. In other words, they didn't overcome with the blood of the lamb and their testimony by testifying to promote themselves. Hallelujah. In order, uh, uh, it was in their heart to testify and promote Jesus, yeah. the Lamb. Yeah. I do know this, that my Lord Jesus, uh, he has a way of doing things. Yeah. He got a way yeah. of doing things. Yeah. As the scripture says in Romans 8 and uh, uh, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them that are called according to what? His purpose. Jesus has a way of shutting things down that don't lift him up. Even though the words that come out of some people's mouth may be words that speak well. It's all about your motive, your hidden agenda. Jesus have a way of shutting it down. Uh, your personal motive and your hidden agendas. He has a way of shutting down that unseen sin. Mm -hmm. 
It sounds just like when Jesus was talking to them Pharisees over in, when they was praying over in Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said in Matthew 6 that the Pharisees, they love to stand and pray out loud in the synagogues. They love public prayer. Hallelujah. It was uh, evident that they was probably uh, praying and, and, and speaking some good words. Their, their prayers probably sounded smooth and holy. But Jesus knew the motive of their heart. They were doing it for show, looking for accolades of the people. So Jesus, he called them what? Hypocrites. Even though they standing up praying, praying up prayer, I'm sure they was praying. I bet the people probably was standing back saying, whoa, they getting it on, man. They praying. Whoa, ain't heard nobody pray like that in a long time. But Jesus stood back and said, you hypocrites. <laughs> Jesus said, you hypocrites. Now that's unseen sin. Are you understanding now? That's unseen sin. I'm, that's the seen, unseen sin that I'm talking about. Having that sinful motive in your heart. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. My God, I, 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 I got off track there a little bit. Let's get back on track. <laughs> what we was talking about. Uh, uh, um, oh, yeah, we was talking about when you do whatever it is that you do, uh, do it unto the Lord and not unto me and the first lady or, or don't do it for show. Colossians 3 and 23 says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartedly. Man, you can stop Paul's teach a week right there. Yeah. Whatever you do, do it heartedly. And that includes giving your offerings and paying your tithes. Yeah. You, you know, you can pay your tithes and, and, and never receive a blessing from it. Because he told you to come cheerfully. Yeah. <laughs> if you give grudgingly... See, that's what I'm saying. You, you, and, and, and nobody knows that you're giving grudgingly but you. That's that unseen sin. See, and you have to understand that he says give cheerfully. Give from your heart cheerfully. And when you don't, even though you may be laying money out, your blessing ain't coming back, uh, uh, shaking down, uh, running over. And you're wondering why. It's because you grudgingly given. Now, 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 let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This, hallelujah. Look, look. Oh, we was at Colossians 23. Whatsoever you do, do it and, and do it heartedly. As unto the Lord and not unto man. Listen. You do things unto the Lord. And not unto man. That's why somebody. Uh, let me see. That's why. Somebody who, who's cleaning the trash can. Or mopping the floors. Hallelujah. Should do just as great a job. As somebody who's doing heart surgery. You, 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 the pride is not to please man. You should have pride in what you do to please God. Yeah. So it shouldn't matter wh wh whether you're picking up roots out the field, or uh, are you plying on the tractor, or are you the man that's in the corporation making the decision on how much uh, the crop is going to cost? It doesn't matter. You should have some pride and dignity, and, 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 and what's the word I'm looking for? Integrity. To do what you're supposed to do. That it's just that simple. If you get hired to do a job, you should do that job. Oh my God. Y'all just toes, oh Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Mm. As you, whatever it is you do, do it unto the Lord. 
Don't let jealousy, angry, or, 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 or upset, you know, you get upset because somebody get acknowledged about something and you don't. Or, or somebody get more recognition than you get. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking right. Mother Hay say, uh, Benji, talking right. That will cause you to walk around with an attitude. It will. And, and the thing about this, it would be noticeable. <laughs> Even though you don't, might not think so, it'd be noticeable. It, it's a change. You, you might think that nobody notices, but the change is recognizable. It, it's, it's the sowing of the seed of unseen sin. This is when you uh, begin to walk in the flesh and not in the spirit. This is when you start to feed your flesh rather than the spirit man. This, hallelujah, is, hallelujah, when you begin to sow seeds of unseen sin. We should do what the scripture says in Galatians 5 and 16. It says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, uh, so often we talk about people sinning. Yeah, well, yes we do. We be talking about it. Especially if you happen to be walking right that day. I come back to that. Hallelujah. Yeah, we so often talk about people sinning, especially the sins that we can see. Uh, 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 if, if you know uh, somebody getting drunk or doing drugs or maybe cheating on their spouse or sleeping around, stealing or something, those sins that, you know, oh, I can peep it out right there. I can see it. You know, that type of thing. But we so often don't talk about the sins like this. Sins like jealousy, strife, and envy, and unforgiveness, pride, and lying, and the such thereof. The, so to speak, unseen sins. They're not just jumping out at you with your natural eyes, you know. Uh, Psalms 19 and 12, it says this. David is talking to God. It says, who can understand his errors? It says, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Then it says in verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Uh, let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Then he says in verse 14, he says this. Y'all know this right here. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. My God. Listen to David. Uh, look what he's wanting uh, the God to do for him in verse 14, that last verse we, we just read. Uh, he, he, he was talking about two things, and, and those two things, those things that always gets us in trouble. Uh, and even those two things was about our mouth and our heart. Them things that always gets us in trouble. Uh, when we look at verse 12, uh, David asked God to cleanse him uh, from secret faults, uh, like being jealous, uh, like, like, like uh, spreading strife and gossip, uh, uh, like not having a forgiving heart, uh, like lying, uh, like having uh, envy and pride. Most of the time, these sins are not just outwardly displayed, you know. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, people are able to hide these sins in their heart. And in their soul. Hallelujah. But eventually, those unseen sins will change your behavior. Eventually. They will manifest themselves. 
cross. It might not be right up front noticeable, uh, but it will begin to play out in the little things that you do. Just like when you say certain things uh, to manipulate a conversation, uh, uh, the situation, uh, or to do, do something to manipulate somebody else. Uh, or, or the way you do a certain thing uh, uh, in that spirit of manipulation to, to bring forth a certain conclusion to something uh, or a certain outcome. Uh, hallelujah. That is what I'm talking about when I say unseen sin. You see, this is exactly what Satan does. Uh-huh. This is what Satan does. He uses the spirit of manipulation to get you to do what he won't done. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you, you, you know, don't be mad with your brother and sister. Hallelujah. Get mad with Satan. Hallelujah. Because he's using, he, he probably done used you before too, eh? I'm, I'm just saying. Listen. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Nobody but Jesus. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep thine heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, you see, these unseen sins hide themselves in your heart. But one thing about them, they can't seem to stay undercover. <laughs> Even though they be hiding in your heart, they can't seem to stay undercover there. They're always poking their head out. Mm. Uh, because the word of God says, out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth speaketh. Uh, so eventually, uh, they're going to manifest themselves. Mm, uh, Y'all listen now. This is why David said, cleanse me from my secret faults. Man, David was something else. Thank God that he was a man that would pray to God, you know, and, and, and ask God to do these type of things. So I know to do these type of things. Thank God that he set an example for us in such a way that, that I don't have to be ashamed to ask God. God, cleanse me from my secret faults. God, it's just me. David asked God in Psalms 19 and 13. He says, keep back thou servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over us. Do you know what presumptuous sins are? Sins that are committed with the full knowledge of knowing that they are sins. <laughs> Willfully or uh, presumptuously, sins are committed with your eyes wide open. In other words, you know what you're doing. You know what's up. It's not some impulsive act that you, that's going on. It ain't, it ain't an impulsive act. It, it ain't just happen. <laughs> it was premeditated. Mm, you know, you know, uh, if you ain't never been in court, then you, you probably looked at enough court TV to say they'd be charging somebody with premeditated murder. In other words, they planned that bad boy out. Uh-huh, they plan it out. You plan that thing. What I'm getting at in this message is unseen, uh, 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 presumptuous sin. Now put it together. Unseen presumptuous sin, you know, unseen sin, we talked about it, jealous and envy, strife, and all that stuff. But presumptuous, in other words, you planned it. Unseen presumptuous sin, uh, that undercover sin uh, that we planned. Uh, uh, oh, my God. We don't want to seem to take an account for that type of sin. For some reason. We don't, we don't, we don't, 
you know, we don't want to do like what David say. God, you know, cleanse me from that. It, it's because, you know, we, we, we don't nobody see it, but you and God. You know, at the time, ain't nobody looking at it, but you, it's presumptuous, unseen presumptuous. Other words, I can't see it, you know, right now. Hallelujah. But you and God know about it. You know why you told that lie. I might not know it's a lie, but you know you told that lie. And, and, and while you was driving to church, you was planning it. This is what I'm talking about. This is the type of thing that'll change your behavior. Oh my God, let me move on. Let me move on. We got, we got another service. Hallelujah. Look, we don't want to seem to count that as sin because nobody really outright sees it uh, uh, but God and you. Nobody knows about them, and, and they are presumptuous. You, you, you just outright plan that thing in your heart and in your soul. I know it's tight, y'all. Hallelujah. But we need to hear about this. Because we need to take care of this issue. Our unseen presumptuous sin most of the time leads us into that known seeable sin. That's where it takes us. It's just like jealousy. A lot of times it leads to murder. Uh, because in revenge of that jealousy spirit, you begin a path down a journey that leads you to a whole bunch of outward sin that you can see. That, that unseen jealous sin, it'll make you change your behavior. Just like envy uh, leads to uh, resentment and, and discontentment, ungratefulness and malice and slander. Uh, it, uh, uh, envy. Envy now, envy can cause people to compare their relationship. You know, when people start comparing things, it'll cause you to compare your relationship, compare success and, and, and compare statuses and, and, and compare you to other images, to others, you know, uh, uh, which can make you feel unknown and uncared for. Which the devil will use against you. Mm -hmm. He'll make you feel like nobody loves you then. See, I'm talking about when that envy seed was planted back there. And then it's growing all the way out. It'll grow all the way out until you envy will make you feel like you're lonely. It'll, it'll even make you, you know, once you begin you comparing yourself and you might don't feel yourself to be up. It'll take you into isolation. I'm, I'm telling you what the real deal is. You know, you might not know why you're in isolation, but I'm trying to tell you. When you, you can't compare yourself to nobody else. See, <laughs> let me move. I got to move on now. Hallelujah. The unseen sin of envy, it'll make you even want to harm yourself. Because you think you don't compare. You know, such and such got a great job and make great money. So they more than me. This is what envy, see, this is what Satan does. This is how he operates. He'll send thoughts in your head that tell you such crazy stuff. There ain't nobody better than you. You are you. Don't compare yourself with somebody else. You are you. Amen? Oh, my God. Pride leads to destruction and a haughty spirit. It will have you treating everybody like you're better than them. Mm -hmm. uh, that unseen pride, haughty spirit will make you change your behavior. Huh? Lying leads to a numerous outward sin Hallelujah, that seeable sin. Now, a person uh, will do almost anything to cover up a lie. And that's a true fact. There's a lot of murders happen because of a lie back yonder. People do all kind of stuff 
to cover up a lie. But see, that lie was unseen in the beginning, but then you're trying to keep it unseen. So therefore, you do all kind of stuff to keep it there. And this is when the outward sin begins. That unseen sin of lying will cause you to change your behavior. You, you see what's happening? Told the lie back there. But now you're trying to change your behavior to cover things up. Hallelujah. It's a change of behavior because of the unseen sin that was planted way back there. My God. First Samuel, hallelujah. Well, let's go back up. One thing that we must all realize is that it's all sin. Uh, whether it's unseen or whether it's outright seeable sin. And it's all sin. And, and it's to be noted from the drug addict to the fornicator uh, uh, to, the spirit, to the spirit of jealousy. If you don't get it right, we all going to end up in the same place. And that place is hell. Whether, whether it's unseen, uh, whether you manipulate or whether you murder somebody. It's all, it's all the same. Hallelujah. First Samuel 18 and 10 goes on to say, And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirits from God came upon Saul, and he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played his hand as other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even unto the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him, him being David, and was departed from Saul. Saul ended up with the spirit of fear because he was afraid of David. Uh, or either he was envious and jealous of David. Uh, he had that unseen sin going on. Uh, now, the word of God says, uh, God do not what, give us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Uh, what the problem really was, uh, Saul was no longer supported by God uh, uh, because of his uh, uh, disobedience uh, because he didn't uh, do what God told him to do. Uh, Saul had lost his anointing. Uh, God was not with Saul anymore. Uh, you remember that 12th verse that we just read uh, um, in 1 Samuel 18 and 12? Uh, it says, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him uh, and was departed from Saul. Uh, this is what happens uh, when you are no longer in the presence of God. Uh, no longer in a relationship with Jesus. Uh, or God is no longer with you uh, and supporting you. Uh, you become uh, 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 um, hallelujah just, just overwhelmed with wicked spirits. Uh, dominated by wicked spirits. Uh, all kind of evil spirits uh, that are contrary to the spirit of God. Uh, spirits that will make you do evil things. Uh, like the unseen jealousy, sin, spirit Saul had. Uh, which manifested into an outright seeable sin of him trying to kill David. Uh, you know, those evil spirits uh, will have us trying to kill somebody today uh, with that tongue of javelin. Uh, oh my God. Uh, that tongue of javelin trying to kill somebody. Uh, that tongue uh, of, of a spear. Hallelujah. Other words, the most sharp words that you use with your tongue. Just like Saul was talking about pinning David up in the wall with that, with that javelin, with that spear. You do the same thing with an evil tongue. My God. 
Now, on the other hand, David was obedient unto God, and God was with him. He had the anointing of God, the protection of God, the guidance and instructions from God, because he had a relationship with God and was obedient unto him. So David uh, escaped from the presence of Saul after Saul was trying to kill him with the spear twice uh, because of that unseen sin of jealousy. Saul raged on trying to kill David. Uh, the, uh, uh, Saul was manifesting uh, unseen sin. Uh, now remember where that unseen sin of jealousy came from. Uh, when, when, when the women sung, uh, David killed 10,000 and Saul his thousand. Well, let me put it into this way. Uh, uh, the practical term of black like this, an example of today. We move on. Uh, it would be like me as the pastor preaching and teaching uh, and uh, Minister Johnson maybe uh, also preaching and teaching uh, and everybody started whispering, man, that Minister Johnson, he really can preach better than the pastor. He can preach better than the pastor. And then I hear about the whispering there. Uh, and I get upset and jealous, uh, and I stop, uh, and I start trying to stop uh, Minister Johnson, uh, hallelujah, from preaching and, and teaching, uh, because I don't want him to look better than me. Or uh, uh, I get scared thinking everybody wants him to make him pastor of the church. Thing number one, God said that your gift will make rooms for you. Uh, in other words, uh, can't nobody stop you uh, when God go to do what it is he wants to do with you. Uh, hallelujah. You can do all you want. Uh, if God want to raise somebody up and have them to do something, it's going to be done. Uh, thing number two, uh, 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 let me uh, help everybody out. Uh, it doesn't matter who come into the church, uh, whether they can teach and preach better than me. God has called me to be the pastor of Words of Life Ministry. He didn't call me to be the best preacher or the best teacher. I know my purpose and position in God, and I know what I was called to do. Hallelujah. I don't know that, I mean, I know that man can't remove me, but only God can remove me. So I don't worry about who can preach and teach better. As a matter of fact, it only benefits the people of God and the church of words of life ministry to have somebody that can teach and preach all in an awesome way. It even better than the pastor. You know, I don't care. Uh, 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 believe me, the only thing that I'm going to do is to encourage them uh, uh, to do it more, uh, to be even better than they already awesomely are. Hallelujah. You got to be confident in who you are and know your place in God. See, uh, that's the thing about it. You you got to know your place in God or your place in Jesus. Uh, you got to know your place in the body of Christ. You see, if you are the hands and the arm and the hands and the arms and the feet and the legs, there's no need for you to get jealous of the head and the brain. Because without the uh, because without the arms and the heads, I mean the arms and the hands and the legs and the feet, uh, the head and the brain, they wouldn't have no members to give orders to. Hallelujah. Uh, they wouldn't, you know, it's kind of like a king without a kingdom. Huh? Hallelujah. Huh? What kind of king that don't have a kingdom? Huh? It does no good. It makes no sense. He don't have any subjects. There's nobody subject under him. Huh? So really, is he really a king? Huh? He has no kingdom. But it's also in the same way. Huh? Uh, the hands and the arm huh? and the legs and the feet huh? without the head, hallelujah, and the brain huh? to give them some order they just hanging around. It's like they dead. My God. Uh, like me and my wife. We are one. What 
I look like getting jealous about her uh, singing so good, like she beautifully, her and uh, Leah done on today. Eh? Hallelujah. And you all start to gravitate toward her. Eh? And because she can sing better than I can sing, you know, I, but, you know, I can get it, though, right? Listen, uh, uh, the better she sang, hallelujah, the better I look uh, because we are one. Uh, hallelujah. We don't work against each other. We work with each other. We work together. We are one. And this is how it should be in the body of Christ. Just because you sing better, it makes us all look good. Uh, just because old sister Taffet back there can usher better, hallelujah, it makes us all look good. Uh, just because Minister Daniels uh, can go down to the Salvation Army and teach those people down there at the Salvation Army like nobody else can, uh, the rest of us, uh, hallelujah, that teach down there shouldn't get jealous uh, because it makes us all look good uh, because we all belong to the church uh, words of life ministry uh, we all belong to the body of Christ uh, and, and uh, hallelujah we all part of the one body uh, hallelujah it makes us all look good uh, when he teach like that uh, my God, you know what, uh, hallelujah, even if you got a, you know, some of us got a messed up looking finger or something, we be trying to hide it from people, huh? hallelujah, when you, when you put on a little makeup or whatever you do to, to make yourself look good, put on some nice clothes and, and, and you know, to make yourself look good, the most of the time people won't even recognize that, that bad finger, huh? Hallelujah, because they be looking at the rest of you looking all good. My God, y'all understand what I'm talking about. I must say, this is also, almost works in reverse too. Hallelujah. And what's happening to the church, the, the church dome or the Christian dome here in America, probably everywhere. It is so much inappropriate things that's uh, that have went on, you know, in Christian dome. A lot of the parts of the body of the church have acted inappropriately. And now it makes the body of Christ here on earth all over kind of looks bad because of all the bad things that have been put forth. Uh, but, somebody say but. But look, we know that Christ is an overcomer. And we know that things don't go by how they look when you're dealing with Jesus. We know that we walk by faith and not by sight. We know that God always is a healer and he got a way of healing the body. And we know that it ain't about what it seems like. Uh, not with Jesus. It ain't about what it seems like. Hallelujah. It, it may seem like one thing but we know that all things work together for the good of them that love Jesus. Jesus, uh, to them who are called according to his purpose. Uh, uh, just like when they hung Jesus on the cross, uh, it looked like the devil had won. Uh, it may look like Christian dawn today uh, is over. Uh, it looked like the people of God might be defeated. Uh, you know, with all this negative stuff that's going on today and all the negativity they presenting about Christians, uh, it may look like uh, it's not a good time to be a Christian in the world today uh, because of all the bad representation. Uh, 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 but believe me, uh, uh, just like it looked bad when Christ was up on the cross, uh, just like uh, uh, it was looking bad because uh, it did, it looked bad when he was on the cross. Uh, matter of fact, all those that was following him, they left and went on back to doing what they was doing uh, before they met. Christ. Uh, hallelujah. But somebody say but. Uh, 
But just uh, when they thought it was over, uh, stand to your feet. Uh, here comes Jesus. Uh, somebody say, here comes Jesus. <laughs> Here comes Jesus, alive and well, defying how it looks. Here comes Jesus, defying those talking about him. Here comes Jesus, defying and defeating death. Here comes Jesus, defeating the devil. But here comes Jesus with victory. Hey, my God. And that same Jesus is giving us victory on today. Even though people may be talking about Christians on the day. We still got victory. Uh, even though we got some bad representation out there. In Jesus, we still got victory. Listen, don't let unseen presumptuous sin dominate your life. Don't let it dominate your life. You know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might not know what it is, but you know what it is. You know when you throw them few words in there to manipulate that conversation, to get the outcome that you wanted. You know. You know that lie you told. I know some of them considered it white lie. I don't know how white it was, but hell still be burning. I don't know the shade of that lie, but hell is hell, and it'd be burning. Yes, and it said all liars, oh, no. white, black, pink, yellow, purple, all liars, got a place in the pit. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is, check yourself. Yes. Do like David. Cleanse me from that secret faults cleanse me yes. call on Jesus and Jesus will take care of those things yes. I mean I know I know you you don't want to do it because it ain't out in the open and ain't nobody know about it uh -huh. so you know you let it ride on be singing that song ride on King Jesus <laughs> but you be letting your sin ride on you and him know about it but let me tell you after a while, it manifests itself. Yeah. And then we be wondering what's wrong. What happened to him? What happened to her? Why she acting like that? You know, why did you respond to me like that? See, it be underlying backdrop things. You know, like, like, like Saul was eyeing David with that stinky eye. He hadn't yet sinned, but he was planting it and watering it. And you see what happened? It came all the way out to him trying to throw a spear at him and kill him. And it all started with him eyeing David. See, I'm trying to tell you this thing, it grows. See, now when he first started out eyeing David, ain't nobody know nothing about it. He could have got that thing right then. But it grew all the way to him trying to kill him with a spear. Kill that unseen thing way back there. Take care of it now here at the altar. Oh. And you know when you come to this altar and ask Jesus to take care of it and we still wouldn't know nothing about it. Ain't it wonderful? Ain't he wonderful? Oh, my God, that unseen sin. Come on down to the altar. Look, come on down to the altar. Ask Jesus to keep back thy servant uh, from that presumptuous sin. Don't let it have dominion over you. See, that presumptuous sin, it starts with that unseen sin. So if you take care of the unseen sin, you got to worry about the presumptuous sin. Hallelujah. Look, don't let the unseen or the presumptuous sin change your life to you behave like Saul behaved when he was trying to kill somebody. Now, 
as I say this, you know, Saul was trying to kill David with a spear. So we think that 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 is, you know, that that's a little like far out there. I ain't going to be doing that. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't trying to run nobody down and kill him with a spear. But listen. Today we kill him with our mouth. With our tongue. Instead of running somebody over with a car, we run them over with our mouth and with our tongue. See, we need to get that stuff right. Because that sin that you do with your mouth like that, it's the same, it has the same result as the sin you run them over with the car. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's get rid of that stuff so that God can promote you. Let's get rid of that so it don't change your behavior and we won't be wondering what's wrong with you. Let's get rid of that thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get rid of it. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, you can come on down to the altar. Hallelujah. You can come down to the altar and allow Jesus to wash away your sins. In the name of Jesus, you can come on down to the altar. If you need to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus is here to do that. We can't do that. Fill you up with the Holy Ghost. That's something that you got to ask God for. Hallelujah. We can pray with you. But it's up to you and God. Hallelujah. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he'll do it right now. Just like he did like 2,000 years ago. As he poured out his spirit. He's still pouring it out today. Hallelujah. He's still pouring it out today. Come on to the altar. Ask God to help you. Cleanse you. From presumptuous sins. From unseen presumptuous sins. From unseen sin. You know. The thing nobody knows about but you. Hallelujah. You know what? Let me tell you. Sometime we can... drive up to a car accident or something and we see somebody with a a big wound in their chest and they're dying and we can see that that they're dying and we begin to pray for them and try to help them out but listen sometimes there's some people that be dying they have cancer in their body and you know what you can't even see it it's unseen but you can see the results of it. As they get sicker, their behavior change. Listen, sin is the same way. That seed of unseen sin is like a cancer. It'll get into you. And it'll begin to grow. You know how cancer take over your body? Hallelujah. Unseen sin will take over. And it will begin, hallelujah, to rule you. It will kill you eventually. It will cause you to change your behavior. It will cause you to, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, God. <coughs> Have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come up. If you're sick in your body and you need prayer, you can come to the altar now. Hallelujah. You can come to the altar now if you're sick in your body and you need prayer. Hallelujah. If you just need prayer to make it through the week. Hallelujah. You can come up to the altar. Hallelujah. It's here and it's available. Help is here and it's available. Don't turn the help away. Hallelujah. 
is here and it's available for you today. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus, help is here and it is available for you. My God, in the name of Jesus, bless right now, God. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. Elaboko shiandarabaka. Haro shandaraboko sieste hitamaha. Thank you, Lord. Oh, randaraboku shiandaraha. Bless right now. Have your way, God. Oh, rotomo shiandarabaha. Aro shete. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. Don't allow sin to change your behavior, to have you acting like Saul was acting, trying to kill David. Hallelujah. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of it. Hallelujah. Get rid of it. It'll change you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, listen, if you're online and you need prayer, give us a call, 706-257-3022. Hallelujah. Somebody will pray with you. Hallelujah. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name or you need to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, or you just need to come and see us in person. You can come down to 3815B Martinez Boulevard in Martinez, Georgia. Hallelujah. Come and take a drink from this fountain of life. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, Kumaha. Jesus will change your life. You hear what I say? Jesus will change your life. Hallelujah. Jesus will change your life. Bless right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah. Thank you. Mm, there's none like you, Jesus. None that can do what you do. You're wonderful, Father. We thank you. You're wonderful, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, baby, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we praise you. Oh, God, we magnify you. God, we thank you for touching hearts. Uh, hallelujah, God. Uh, bless those, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, God. Thank you. Have your way. Thank you. Have your way, you. Have your way God. Uh, oh, God, continue, God, to have your way, God. Oh, God, uh, change the lives on today, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, touch right now, God. Uh, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. We magnify you. God, we thank you, God. Uh, hallelujah for exposing those unseen sins, Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you for changing our lives, God. Hallelujah, God, we thank you uh, for forgiving us and, and removing those presumptuous sins, God. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we look to you, God, uh, for help, God. Uh, oh, God, to continue in your way, God. Uh, help us, God, uh, uh, that we move forward in you, God. Uh, Father, bless Bless right now, God, uh, all those, God, uh, that are in this building, God. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, work on our hearts, uh, work on our minds, uh, work on our souls, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, God, uh, oh, remove the spirit of manipulation. Uh, remove the spirit of envy and jealousy. Uh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Remove them things right now in the name of Jesus, uh, 
Hallelujah. Father, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand praise. Hallelujah.